Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm your host, Sarah Rose. And before we get started today, I'd like to tell everyone about an interesting experience I had at everybody's favorite 24-hour eatery. Uh, you know, Casa de la Waffle or something to that nature. You see, I happen to look like this. Wasn't that exciting? Anyway, I know what you're thinking, and the answer is yes, I do have a whistle. But that's not the reason why I showed you that. The reason why I showed you that is so that you can understand what an adorable expression this, um, you know, 20 pushing 97 year old toothless man gave. I'm not sure if he was excited or scared, but I do know one thing. It was adorable. And with that out of the way, welcome back to another episode of Queen's Corner with me, your host, Sarah Rose. Today's episode is about ingenuity, or general innovativeness, if you will. You see, I have a lovely waitress, a beautiful, talented young waitress. And she has my hot tea ready for me every single time I come in. No, really, when she sees my car pull up, she actually just makes hot tea. Just because she knows it's my order. Which means I love her. And one day, she gave me my hot tea pre-made instead of the bag and the creams. And so, I give it a taste thinking, oh, well this is just going above and beyond. Good for her. Good for her. And I sip it, realizing instantly something is very wrong. And I say to her, Darling, sweetie, my true love, what are you doing? And she just responds, Well, we were out of tea. So I questioned what I had just drank because I was under the impression it was tea. To which she responded, Oh, well, since we were out of the hot tea bags, I took unsweet tea, put it in a coffee pot, and put that coffee pot on the burner. Okay, except the unsweet tea was old, and the burner was on the fritz, so it was cold. These things don't pan out well. Anywho, that's right, ingenuity in this sense, means ghetto shit. Yay, ghetto shit! Oh my god! That might have been a touch overly enthusiastic, but I have been waiting a very long time to do a video on trifling ghetto-ass drag queens and people in general. Why, you may ask? Well, it's a long and terribly boring story. That's a lie. I had to nail a bitch's high heel back together. That's right. She broke her heel clean off the rest of the shoe, and I sat there with a hammer and a nail, and I pounded that shit back in. That you cannot fucking write in a room full of drunk-ass people, just nailing a heel back together. But other than overly excited pounding, what? No drum roll? But um, nothing? Okay. Other than that, there is a ton of ghetto crap just out there. For example, Kool Aid dye jobs. What? What? No idea what you're talking about. Sure you don't, sweetie. And this is my natural hair, too. You know what? These fuchsia highlights, they're natural. My hair does that. Yeah. Yeah. How you feel. All up in my Kool-Aid. Don't even know the flavor. Don't even know. Did not think so. Mm. Oh, come on, girl. It looks great. 
And besides, this sister works for tips anyway. It's not like I can go out and afford real dye. Please, girl. I don't use cherry, watermelon, grape. I just can't get your color. I tried. Help a sister out. Okay. Pomegranate. It's natural. Pomegranate is a fruit. The flavor of the Kool-Aid is pomegranate. Now you know. Knew I'd get that ratchet bitch to admit that it was a Kool-Aid dye job. And now I know the flavor. <laughs> anyway, bringing me back to the actual point of this video, which is that if you do or think any of the following things, you're either ghetto or a potentially good drag queen. Okay, here's an example. If you think this leopard print goes with this zebra print at the same time, not drag queen, ghetto. If you think this giant flower belongs anywhere near your head, drag queen. Now that we've covered the basics, if you do this at any point in time, making the attempt to get service, Bitch vibrated on me. But my point being, if you try to get service, like a cell phone tower, ghetto. If you've ever felt not your slimmest and wrap duct tape around your whole body, drag queen. See, so you're getting the hang of these things. For example, zebra print, but also fat. Drag queen. Pair of Crocs. I would never actually touch one, so just imagine there's a Croc here somewhere. If you ever worn these and thought they were just fabulous, well, that's not ghetto or drag queen. That's just sad, and I want to help you. I do. You don't have to go through this alone. Please, let me help you. Let me help you. Moving on to things that you might not think are ghetto, but they really are. Hand dryers. The ones that blow air instead of just dispense a damn paper towel. They have never, ever, ever done their job. Never. For example, next time you go to a bathroom, if you've forgotten how terrible these things are, wash your hands, which you should be doing anyway. Mother knows best. And after you wash your hands, hit dry. Stand there and feel like Rip Van Winkle as you waste 20 years of your life not knowing what happened. When you leave the bathroom, you don't even know what year it is. You just know that your hands finally got dry two decades in the future. Moving on from the failures of modern hand drying technology, printers. Why printers, you ask? Because they are the bane of my technological existence. You see, I have a printer and it was new. I say was new because it decided that it couldn't print my document without a full cartridge of yellow ink. My black and white document needed a full cartridge of bright yellow ink. I, in turn, decided I needed a new target to throw my straight roommate's hammers at. Oh, fun times. Hand-eye coordination, how you never fail me. Anyway, I'm not asking for holograms or warp engines or teleporters or anything. I just think we can do a little better than the technological equivalent of hobo soup. I mean, really, this is like if hobo soup were a lifestyle. Every time I deal with inferior technology, I feel like I'm about to eat a dinner from a pot filled with leftover roast beef, shoestring, chopped potato, rat. Seriously, hobo soup as a lifestyle 
describes this. I don't need my black and white document to have neon yellow on it any more than that girl that you saw at Walmart needed those bright yellow plastic chunks of jewelry to accent what were probably Crocs. Yeah, she didn't think you saw her, but you saw her. That big plastic jewelry everywhere in a bright, offensive color. I don't know what it was. It might have been lemon yellow, lime green, fluorescent blue, whatever it was. It was the same color as the rest of her outfit, and you thought to yourself, why? Just why? And then you moved on. Say lovey. But I didn't move on, America. I didn't. And I want you to take up this fight with me. No more faulty hand dryers. Sucky printers. No more Crocs. Really, America, no more Crocs. I try, but I'm only one drag queen. I am the equivalent of the world's most fabulous clown. This is what my life is. I need you to help me save the world from the evils of crappy accessories and plastic shoes. Yes. Bringing it back, I'm not quite sure how this video got to be so long, but I am sure of one thing. The next time that you try to use your head as a cell phone tower to boost reception, or you fix something with chewed up gum or duct tape, you know I do have many, many uses for duct tape. <laughs> you're going to think of me and you might think gee you know I'm not sure if they actually make pomegranate kool-aid but if they do wouldn't it make a swell dye job or you could think of something else something near and dear to all of our hearts and of course to the youth of America the war on Crocs we have to get Crocs out of our schools, out of the public, away from the shopping malls, away from the children. We have to protect the children. This is really about them, America. Protect the future of our children by passing legislation to ban Crocs. I don't know who you're voting for in the upcoming election, but I vote for the party against Crocs. Because I am an American, and I am proud of that. Sarah A.